of fatwa. And all other shayukh, scholars, and respectable representatives of our stream and society. Alhamdulillah ta'ala, this is definitely an occasion of pleasure for me to be with you this evening. Particularly enjoying very good dinner and knowing about very important praiseworthy, highly appreciable and highly needed works and efforts which are being carried on by Darul Fatwa. And these noble works which are promoting the peaceful cause of Islam in this Australian society. A noble work being carried on by the great students of Shaykh Abdullah al Harari Rahimahullah I congratulate you and I pray for your success and I pray for safety, security, prosperity, development and all kinds of Allah's blessings for this Australian society which is known to be one of the most peaceful democratic human societies of the world. I never knew that after this dinner, I would be asked to pay the bill <laughs> in the form of speech or talk or any nothing words. I thought this is just a dinner and it is a meeting and it is a very light evening. So just now I came to know that I have to pay this bill too. <laughs> so, <laughs> I appreciate what the Sheikh, the chairman of Darul Fatwa, the Sheikh Salim Alwan, Damat Barakatuhu, has stated the way he has presented the view, the teachings, the stance of Islam. I absolutely endorse it. And this is the real and true path of Islam. At this occasion, I would like to mention a very beautiful speech of Holy Prophet, the Messenger of Islam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This was an international speech which he delivered in the night of ascension. Laylatul Isra Ibn Mi'raj. He delivered a great khutbah and speech. And the audience were the prophets and messengers. And the place was Jerusalem. Al Quds. Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, as the Muslims celebrate. And it was this night was celebrated last month. Laylatul Isra Ibn Mi'raj. It is every year celebrated in the last Islamic month, Rajab. And I hope there must be some gatherings, yes, celebrations and muhadrat on the subject. Just it occurred to me all of a sudden, and I thought it would be a, a very relevant topic to mention this night, if I am supposed to utter a few words. As far as this great ascension journey is concerned, the journey of Isra and Miraj, it is a great lesson for mankind. Holy Prophet Muhammad he started his journey from Masjid al-Haram, from Makkah. 
It is reported by Anas ibn Malik and by Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala no in different hadiths quoted by Imam Behaki and many other authorities of hadith. He didn't ascend it directly to heaven from Mecca. Instead, he was taken from Mecca to Medina, where he was supposed to migrate a year or two years later. At that time, there was no plan of migration. So he started his journey from Mecca and went to Medina and prayed there two months. A supplementary prayer of two cycles. Then he was taken, according to the Muslim traditions, which has been reported by holy prophets, peace be upon him, himself, in the great authentic books of Hadith. Then from Medina, at that time it was known as Yathra, he was taken to the mountain of Sinai where Moses had spoken to Almighty Allah. And that was the spiritual center of Jewish religion. So he starts his journey from the spiritual center of Muslim faith, Mecca and Madinah. And he is taken to Mount mountain of Sinai, where Moses had already spoken to Almighty Allah, God, and he received his Ten Commandments and he received his Torah which he brought to his people, Israelites. And he prayed their supplementary prayer. Then he was taken from the mountain of Sinai to Jerusalem. And he was taken to the birthplace of Jesus Christ. The Maulid, Baytullah. He was taken to Baytullah in Jerusalem and he was asked again to offer a supplementary prayer consisting of two cycles. He prayed supplementarily and then he was taken to the Dome of Rock. And after that he went to Masjid Aqsa. That was the temple built by David and Solomon built by so Prophet Solomon. And of, since that time it had been the, the worship center of the Jewish religion as well as the Christian religion. A meeting place of both religions. So his journey of ascension, Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu journey of ascension, his travel of Isra and Bir Isra particularly, because Mi'raj starts afterwards ascension towards the heavens. So it is a combination of three great divinely revealed religions. The center of Islam, the center of Jewish religion, and the center of Christian religion. So this was a great message and from there he ascended to the heavens. And after coming back from his ascension, he again came to Jerusalem the same temple of Solomon and David, Masjid al-Aqsa, and from there he came back to Mecca. So this night it was a great message for a peaceful interaction of all religions, which provides us with a base of interfaith harmony. And this was the interfaith harmony as a Sunnah of Holy Prophet was laid down and as a foundation of the teachings of Islam in the night of Islam. By combine, combining all three centers together. When he arrived in Al Masjid Al Aqsa, here he led the prayer where all prophets and messengers participated. And after that prayer, all prophets delivered their speeches, their brief speeches. Prophet Abraham delivered his speech. Mm -hmm. Then Prophet Dawood, David, he delivered his speech. Then Prophet Moses, Moses delivered his speech. 
Then Holy Jesus Christ delivered his speech. And finally, the speech was delivered by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So in this beautiful session, I would like to mention a few words of his speech that night. His speech which he delivered in front of all prophets and messengers. There's a beautiful speech contains a very important and significant points, very significant lesson, a great everlasting message for mankind and particularly for the Ummah, the Muslim community as a whole. His first word, first sentence he spoke was, Alhamdulillah illazi ja'alani rahmatan lil alami. Praise be to the Lord of the universe, God Almighty, who made me mercy for all words. So this speech, this khutbah was a great message. And the first sentence which he uttered in his that speech was that he was made mercy for all words not only for words of humans, but words of all who have been created. All creatures, all worlds, all universes. So he said that, I praise Almighty God who made me mercy for all. So first message was the message of mercy. And second very important point is that in his first sentence, he did not speak about his community. He did not speak about his own self. He did not speak about his religion, Islam. The first sentence which he uttered from his holy mouth was containing two messages. One message of mercy and second the message of universality, globality. So he spoke about the global Broadness. He spoke about the universe, he spoke about the, inter, oh, the universal aspect of Islam. That Islam is not a religion which thinks for the betterment or which thinks for the goodness of Muslims only. No, I have been sent as a mercy for all worlds. This was the first message. Message of mercy and message of universality. His second sentence of the speech was Varsalani ilan nasi jamia Varsalani rasulan ilan nasi jamia This was the second sentence. In his first sentence he talked about globality and universality. In second sentence he spoke that Almighty Allah sent me as a messenger for the whole of mankind. So again in the second sentence of his khutbah, of his speech, he did not speak about his own community, I mean Muslims. No. In the second sentence, he came a bit down and he spoke about the humanity. He spoke about the mankind. That I have been sent towards the whole of mankind. Referring to the Quranic verse, Ya Yuhannas, Inni Rasulullah ilaykum jamia. And the first sentence was referring to the words, Wama arsalna ka illa rahmatan lil alameen. That he has been made the mercy for all the words. And secondly, he is raised as a messenger for all of mankind. That's why he said, Ya yuhannas, inni rasulullah ilaykum jamia. He never said that, O Muslim, I have been sent for you. Throughout his life, he never uttered these words, O oh, Arabs, people living on the Arabian Peninsula, I have been raised or sent for you. I am a humble student of Islam, and humble students of the teachings of Holy Prophet, and humble students of the traditions, the hadith of Holy Prophet. In Canada, since I was busy for the last many years in compiling a great voluminous book, a compendium on Hadith, Jami Sunnah. Its full name is Jami Sunnah Fima Yahtaju Ilayya Akhirun. 
Jami us Sunnah, this book of Hadith, a compendium, contains of 30,000 Ahadith. It consists of 20 volumes. Through compilation of this Hadith work, Alhamdulillah, I went through my reading more than 400,000 Ahadith. I had to study more than 400,000 Ahadith in order to choose and compile 30,000 hadiths in this companion of 20 volumes. So being a humble student of hadiths and holy prophet's tradition, I am saying these words with full confidence and responsibility. And all these great shuyukh and scholars, they will endorse it. The holy prophet throughout his, throughout his life, he never ever said, the two people of Arab, Arab, I have been sent as a soul for you. I have been sent as a mercy for you. I have been sent as an embodiment of mercy and compassion for you. I have been sent as a prophet for you. He never said this to Meccans, he never said this to Medinans, and he never said this to Arabs, or he never said this to the people of Yemen and sitting and living around that Arabian Peninsula. He spoke and he said, I have been sent to you. Whenever he spoke, he, he talked to all of the mankind, to all of the humanity. So the problem, what wrong has occurred to us? That our thoughts and our ideas are narrowing and our, our loyalties and our thinkings and our ideas and our thoughts for betterment and goodness, we are narrowing them to such a, such a level that we have stopped thinking about the whole of mankind. All of mankind is a single unit. Which Almighty Allah said, Ya yuhanna suttaku rabbaku bulladhi khalaqaku min nafsin wahida. We have been taught of dignity of mankind and unity of mankind. That all of mankind has emerged from a single unit. Whether that unit was Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam or that unit is a biological cell, whether it talks of biology and embryology, that it emerged from a single cell, cell, whether it talks of history, but the whole of mankind has emerged from a single unit in the same way as the whole of universe has emerged from a singularity. As whole of singularity, all heavens and the earth and the all expansions of universe, they were in fact, in the beginning, they were a like zero volume singularity. And whole universe has been emerged and expanded throughout that unit. In the same way, humankind has emerged from a single unit, a singularity, a cell. So Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke about humanity. Second message. Then he uttered the third sentence. Then, at third stage, he spoke about his own ummah, his own community, I mean the Muslim community. He spoke only one sentence on the subject of universality, one sentence on the subject of humanity, one sentence on the subject of his, of his own community, the Muslim ummah. And how important are those words when he characterizes when he modulates and characterizes his community. He, he mentions a specific character of his community. And his words are, he said, وَجَعَلَ أُمَّتِي أُمَّةً وَسَطًا And praise be to Almighty Allah who made my ummah, my community, a moderate ummah, a moderate community. We have to think of that, that single sentence when the Prophet is introducing his ummah, his community, to all of the Prophets in the night of ascension. And he is saying, Almighty Allah has made my ummah ummatan masata. And again he was referring to a Quranic verse. Ummatan wasatan litakunu shuhada ala nas wa yakuna rasulu alaykum shahida. He was mentioning that my ummah it is in Quran also. That my ummah has been made a moderate ummah. It means, I endorsing the words of Shaykh Salim, the chairman of Darul Fatwa, endorsing his views, I would say, 
Holy Prophet's word, if we analyze this sentence, Ja'alani ummati, Ja'ala ummati ummatan, Vasata, my ummah and my community has been made a moderate community. It means Holy Prophet has given a categorical, a positive and categorical message to us. And that message is anybody who is non-moderate and anybody who is extremist, he is not a part of my community. Anyone who, who commits an act of extremism, who commits an act of violence, who commits an act of militancy, who commits an act of terrorism, and he commits an act of killing mankind, irrespective of faith, whether he kills Muslim or non-Muslim, the life is equal for us. The man who commits the act of terrorism, and he is an extremist, by saying the word Ummatan, Vasatan, he is conveying us the message, he is not part of my community. He is not part of the Muslim Ummah. He may be anything, but he has no concern with me and my Ummah. This was the third sentence. And then the fourth sentence he uttered about himself. Look at his, his, his moral values. He does not start from the praise of his own prophethood. He starts from universality, the great message. Then he comes to the humanity. Then he comes to his own community. And in the end he says something about himself. And he again says, praise be to Almighty Allah. Ja'alani fatihan wa khatima. He made me the opener of the line, opener of the whole lineage of prophethood and closer of the line of the prophet. I am the Fatih, I am the opener, the first prophet as I was created and I am the last one as I was raised and sent. So I am awwal wa akhir wa Fatih wa khati. So when we consider the Holy Prophet the message of that night in just these four sentences, a very brief summarized message. So we come conclude that the first thing which Holy Prophet says, he talks about the universal values, universal. He expands our thinking at universal level, at global level. We should think at global level. We should think of the globe not for our own community or society or country or our own religion, not for our own culture, not only for our own limited or narrow circle. Our thoughts and loyalties and our struggle, our efforts for the goodness and promoting the goodness should be at the global level. And second thing he talked of humanism. That was message of humanism. And the third message saying, Ummatan Vasatan was the message of moderation. So Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. First message was message of mercy for the whole world, all worlds. So mercy and compassion, this is the first message of Islam. Given by Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in Laylatul Isra. Second message is message of humanism. And third message is message of moderation. Whole Islam is based on these three particular pillars. Pillar of global values, pillar of human humanity and humanism, and pillar of moderation. Islam is a balanced religion. Islam does not tolerate any intolerance. There is no room for any kind of imbalance in Islam. All beauty of Islamic religion lies in balance and tolerance and moderation. Even human personality, according to Islamic teaching and the modern scientific too, has been composed with various aspects. We have a biological aspect in our personality. At the same time, we have a social aspect in our personality. At the same time, we have cultural aspect of our personality. At the same time, we have a psychological aspect of our personality. Then we have a psychical aspect of our personality. Then we have a transcendental aspect of our personality. Then we have a spiritual aspect of our personality. A human person is composed of seven different dimensions and seven different uh, aspects. None of these aspects 
is allowed to be overwhelmed or to be dominant. Islamic teaching is there should be a beautiful balance and moderation between all aspects and dimensions of personality. If anybody wanted to worship the whole night, Holy Prophet stopped him. He said, no, you have not only the right of God on you, your wife has also a right on you, your children have also a right on you, and your body has also a right on you. Society has also a right on you. He stopped him even if he is going towards extreme in an act of worship. If somebody goes to an extreme, even an act of charity, he stops him. He said, no, moderation, moderation. Don't spend everything that nothing is left to you for your own livelihood or for your own children. It will create problem in your life. When he talks about walking, he said, don't walk quickly. Don't walk too slowly, moderation. Walk in a moderate manner. In eating, don't eat too much. Don't remain always with fasting. Eat moderately. Speak moderately. Dress moderately. In each and every aspect of human life, Islam has taught moderation. He has given a balanced view of every aspect. Moderation. Even the whole of deen and moderation lies on the subject and Islam has taught the easiness for everybody because this is a religion of moderation. So it means that it provides, it removes the hardships from the teachings. Was coming to end of my talk, the last point which I would like to explain. When we go into the legislative principles of Islam, when we study into the depth, the legislative or jurisprudential principles of Islamic law, we know why legislating Islamic laws and rules and why making the understanding the commandments, they are based on certain basic jurisprudential principles right from the beginning of Quran to the end. And every single commandment given by Holy Prophet if we trace into its depth, we will find they are based on specific principles. And all the, if you put all principles together, they are, they become a beautiful, uh, body, beautiful embodiment of moderation and balance. So Islamic law, religion, morality and teachings and commandments, first of all, are based on the principle of removal of hardship. Raful Haraj. First principle of Islamic law is that there should be no hardship in the human life. There should be no inconvenience in human life. There should be no burden in human life. They are to be removed. And Quran mentions one of the great attributes of Holy Prophet saying, Prophet Muhammad was raised to cut out the chains in which the human humanity was chained. And he has come and he has been raised to remove the burdens from the shoulders of mankind. So that the mankind may live a very easy and convenient life and it may come out of the ambit of inconvenience and hardships. This is the main. So, so those people who put Islam as a very hard religion, harsh religion, very cruel philosophy, in this way that everybody who listens about it, he is shocked and who promotes the hatred instead of love and mercy, who promotes harshness instead of softness and compassion, it means he has never studied Islam and he is bringing some bad name to Islam. He has his own negative agenda. He has been paid for it. He is a criminal person and he wants to give the name of Islam to his own criminal activities and criminal life. Removal of hardship is the first principle. Second is lessening of difficulties. There should be no act in Islam which should put the people in difficulty. Say, La nafsan illa the Quran says that Almighty Allah wants to remove your hardship and want to lessen your difficulties from your life so that you may practice it very easily without any problem. Then Islam has provided the principle of exemptional permissibility exception. Wherever a particular commandment is very difficult to practice, an exception has been given there. 
exemption, articles of exemption have been given there. فَمَنِ اتُّرَّ خَيْرَ بَاغٍ وَلَعَاذٍ فَلَا إِسْمَ عَلَيْهِ Wherever one feels any difficulty, any problem, even if you go to a journey, although there are not those hardships as they used to be in the olden time, even then, God says, reduce the cycles and the numbers of my prayers. Cut it down. For women in their monthly problem, cut down their, the prayers forgiven for them. For every situation where somebody finds any difficulty, your hardship, difficulty is removed, an exception is granted to him. Exception. So that he can practice it easily. And in difficulty, exceptions are granted. He is forgiven to act on that. In the same way, graduality has been imposed. Graduality. Islam was never imposed as a single sentence, as a single order, as a single commandment. No, it was enforced gradually in 23 years. In 23 years. And particularly when Holy Prophet migrated to Medina. It's very important thing to note it that first of all, the religious commandments were never enforced. Neither God, Almighty Allah, nor Prophet himself. They did not enforce or impose the religious commandments for acts of worship. After migration, the first act which was taken by Holy Prophet was to create a social cohesion. The first act which Holy Prophet started his marine and life with was to create a social cohesion within his community by distributing the resources with each other so that poverty is alleviated. First step which Holy Prophet took was the poverty alleviation, an act of charity so that they may get financial and economic prosperity and the hardship, economic hardship is removed. Everybody gets the basic needs. So he distributed the wealth and resources among each other. So he started with social economic cohesion. And second step which he took, he did not enforce the five times a prayer in his beginning. He did not enforce the fasting of Ramadan in the beginning. He did not enforce the halal and haram and pollution of riba and interest. No, he started with social acts and reforms. Then he started, then he went to an alliance, political alliance with Muslim and Jewish communities. And he wrote down a Sahifa, al wasiqa al misaq That was the first constitutional document written by Holy Prophet which became the constitution of the first city-state of Medina. And he included Muslims and Jews together. And he stated there, Inna Yehuda Bani Auf, Ummatum Ma'al Mumini, the Jews of Bani Auf, and then afterward he said, all allies to the Jews of Bariyov, they, along with the Muslim community, today they form one nationality, one community, and one social unit. So including Muslims and non-Muslims into one nationality, this concept of nationality, this is Australian nationality, which includes all religions, all cultures, this is multiculturalism. This was founded by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. All religions and cultures were included and he declared Ummatun Ma'al Mumini Today they have become one nation. So Islam gives us the concept of one nation when you live together. Basing on these ties that would be totally wrong to fight with them. And the last point, Holy Prophet, after that he stepped towards the enforcement of religious laws. So this was a gradual process. So he prophets us in the same way. Then there was the principle of nas, abrogation and repeal. Wherever there was any difficulty, very soft laws were revealed. When the people became used to that situation, then there was a change. After repealing, abrogating, new laws were introduced. So everywhere, human nature and its weakness was keep, kept into the consideration. And always, Convenience was provided to them, a soft attitude was provided for them, a very kind, compassionate and merciful attitude was provided to them. This was the prophethood of Muhammad and Islam of the Holy Prophet and the message of Quran. So today, if we are truly a Muslim and we belong to the Muslim community, then and we belong to the Ummah and community of Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, then we have to adopt the behavior of humanism instead of terrorism. We have to think about the human values, but the human benefit. 
And there used to be the Muslim Jews and all Christians living together. And Holy Prophet and his wives and the companions used to send their food to their houses. They used to send their sadaqah to them, charities to them. And same was practice of the caliphs, guided caliphs. They used to remove the taxes from the old citizens of the non-Muslim community. They used to help them, always. So this was the whole concept given by Islam. And this was the whole message of Islam communicated to us by Prophet of Islam, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I think the best message of Islam today for our younger generations who have been hijacked, unfortunately, or who are being hijacked by the extremists. And final conclusion, I would say, this extremism has two levels. It's a very important a policy thing. I'm just giving a point to, to ponder is that we are tackling in war of terror against violent extremism. And up till today, we have never touched and we have never tackled the non-violent extremism. And to me, I think violent extremism, extremism cannot be tackled properly. It cannot be eliminated and terminated unless we start our action from non-violent extremism. Non-violent extremism is the foundation, is the ground where we find the seeds, where all plants and trees grow. And these are the places where violent extremists and terrorists get every kind of theological support, every kind of philosophical support, every kind of academic support with wrong interpretations of Quran and Sunnah. So they get support and they think whatever we are doing through suicide bombing or by killing the people, we are committing act of martyrdom, we are committing jihad, they are totally using wrongly the terms of Islam. But whatever, they are in practice and they are being supported by thoughts and thought provider are the people who are non-violent extremists. So we have to start the tackling of the problem from non-violent extremism. Only then we are able to, to uh, be successful in our fight and war against the terrorism and terror. I again thank my lot of thanks to Darul Fatwa and all of the community representatives and the community leaders and shuyukh and scholars and our Australian brothers, all of them who are present this evening here. I I'm again, I would uh, thank to you because you spent some time. I got a chance to sit with you, to share some views and some aspects with you. And these are our common values which we have to do. Whether it is Australia, it is England, it is America, it is Canada, it is East or West. The problem is common for all the men, for all of the world of mankind. And I hope with these common values and common sharing these common efforts, Almighty God will make us successful to bring a peace for the whole world. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.